Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're gonna talk about how to pin a full ball gown. Uh, so there's a lot to unpack with this video, so hang in there. There's gonna be a lot of things that you're gonna also learn just kind of on the side um, as we go over this, because it's really, really hard not to touch into other areas um, as far as sewing and pinning goes when you do a video like this. So um, I have done a cutting video. If you've not seen that yet, this is actually the one that precedes it. So you're gonna do the pinning and then the cutting, and then someday I'm going to do a whole class on um, actually pinning on a person and the process of that. So here is the bride, and uh, what we're going to start with is the crinoline layer or the petticoat layer that you'll hear people talk about. Um, so this is going to be the first layer that you work with with your pinning. Uh, when I did the cutting video, a lot of people were kind of up in arms about the, the example that I used had only one pin in it. That is not ideal. Ideally, you're going to have several different fittings when you have a very full ball gown to be able to get it just right. Ideally, you're gonna have several different pin pinnings and um, you can pin and hem each layer or each section of layers independent of one another. That's gonna give you the most accurate hem. I wanted the one pin in the cutting video because I wanted to isolate the idea of cutting. How do you manage this gown? In this pinning video, we're gonna go into how many pins you put in a gown in a perfect world, okay, in a perfect scenario. Uh, you're never going to start, at least I'm not, going to start expecting to have an accuracy in my hem length until the bodice or the top part of the dress is completed. So when I say the bodice or the top part of the dress, what I'm referencing is sometimes it's not just the bodice. Sometimes if you have a mermaid and the gown is fitted all the way to here and then starts to flare out or here, and starts to flare out. If it's tight through here, any adjustments through here are going to change the length of your hem. So you wanna make sure that this is mostly squared away. The crinoline layer is the layer that you can sometimes get by with working on this and putting a pin in this layer when you're still working a little bit on the top. If you get this generally close enough up here you can usually take a basic equation such as, let's say the bride is 5'3", okay? And let's say she's going to wear a two inch heel. That gets her to 5'5". Five five. And let's say this manufacturer is in keeping with how most bridal designers do the length of the gowns. And let's say their fit model is estimated at around 5'10". That means you're going to have an extra five inches of length at the bottom in most cases. Please note, I'm saying most cases. Sometimes we have to shorten at the waist um, some of the designers, particularly the higher end designers, they'll even go for more of a 6'2 kind of fit model and they're very, very long, particularly if you are getting a sample gown that was used in a runway show, which we do see sometimes and they can be extremely long. So in that scenario, if this is fairly typical and the gown is kind of close to fitting, you can often go ahead and hem the crinoline according to your math for the five inches. Um, this is speaking for uh, seamsters who are under some type of pressure to go ahead and be chipping away at the hem, either uh, because they want to see progress at each fitting or because they're limited in their number of fittings. Okay, so the goal for the crinoline, again, like I mentioned, is not perfect accuracy usually. The crinoline is not cut to the floor to be a perfect floor length like the outer layer. So you will find most of the time when you are hemming a gown, 
The accuracy gets more detailed, more important, as you work your way to the outer layers of the gown. The outermost layer of the gown is the one that is typically made to be floor length. So the crinlin, often we will see it cut to be more like the top of the foot. You want some freedom of movement in there. Um, I even, this is a personal preference, I even will, um, if I find that there's plenty of support in the layers um, that are outer from the crinlin layer, I'll often hem this to be to the top of the foot on the bride barefoot. So that way if she's getting ready and she's in slippers and whatnot, the crinlin length is comfortable for her and she only has to pick up the outer layers of her dress to move around, okay? So this is, uh, this is the stage that you would be pinning the crinlin layer. I would pin it again to the top of the foot when this is close enough through here. You can usually come through and uh, you can either shorten it or if you've made a mistake and um, it's it's a little bit too short, it's often not a big deal to go ahead and replace some of the tool or add another layer or something like that. So this is also the lowest risk layer, the crinoline. Notice I'm not saying it's not important. It's one of your most important layers. It's a foundational layer. I'm just talking right now as far as um, the detail of the accuracy. Uh, most of the time, let me put it this way, your crinlin could have a little wiggle room of an inch or two in length, and it's not usually going to affect the outside look of the gown. Whereas on some gowns, you're looking at needing maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch accuracy kind of perfection in the length of your outermost layers. So that's what I'm speaking about there. Now let's look at the next layer and this video is also going to be very helpful for those of you who are designing large ball gowns and you would like an understanding of how each layer works off of each other, okay? So I'm going to tell you what layers we most often see, how they are ordered, the way they're stacked, um, as I'm telling you about the pinning. So let's assume that the pinning of the crinlin has been done and the crinlin, the crinlin has been shortened. This next layer that we will often see in a full ball gown is going to have more, it's usually going to have kind of a A-line ball gown-ish kind of shape, okay? It might be cut on the circle uh, but a lot of times for a full ball gown, you might even see um, kind of these princess seams here continued into seams in the skirt. Now in this layer, because it needs to hold its own for a weighty skirt, you will often see the horsehair braid hem. The more support that this layer needs to give to the dress, often you will see wider horsehair braid hem. So sometimes you'll only see a half an inch or a quarter of an inch. Um, most common that I see, I think is like two, two and a half inch wide. If it's a very full ball gown needing lots of support, you may even see four or six inch wide horsehair braid trim. In this particular instance, I would have the bride hold up her top layers. I would not mark this layer until the fitting has been completed. Up above so no more shortening of the waist no more tightening of the bodice I would go ahead and pin this one uh, basically to the floor I would make sure that I pull the dress to fall while I'm pinning it at the exact angle that we feel like it will fall due to the push of the crinoline and we're gonna go ahead and put a pin at the floor uh, a pin at any of these seams a pin at the side seams. And then, of course, you get into a whole other subject if she's wanting to reduce the footprint of her gown by bringing uh, her train in any on the sides or even hemming the back of the train. That is a whole different subject. Uh, but if you master the pinning in the front, you will very much be able to figure out how to have a conversation with the bride 
and and um, and put your pins in and uh, mirror pin and mirror cut. I go into the mirror cutting in the cutting video. So that should be fairly straightforward for you at that point if you have not started working on ball gowns yet. You're gonna develop that skill quite quickly. I often have her kind of draw an imaginary line with a yardstick or a laser pointer and then I put the pins in there. But again, it's a conversation, it's a skill that you'll learn just along with your people skills as a seamster. So I'm going to mark the floor. Now going back to the cutting video, when you cut this, you're going to always want to have your hem allowance in this layer. I like to, for the horsehair braid fully lined layer, I like to leave like an inch and a quarter hem allowance in there. That way if they ever want it lengthened, that extra length is inside the lining of those two layers. So this layer that we're talking about, it could be a single layer with a uh, horsehair braid and it's just rolled into the braid, or we can be talking about a fully lined bagged hem. This is what you're gonna most often see as your second most layer after the crinoline for a full ball gown. Okay, so the next layer that we most commonly see, it's not in every gown, but it's super common. You will see a diffuser layer. This often is just kind of like a slightly stiffer net or tool it's not quite as fine as a tool that you would find on the outer length of the gown. Uh, this is also very often uh, an organza layer. I'm gonna put the subject of an organza layer aside for now, and I'm gonna talk about this diffusing layer uh, as being a stiffer or uh, just a tool that has a little bit of a stiffer hand to it than what you would see like a fine illusion tool on the outside of the dress. For this layer, I just put in just your basic pins, just one in the middle and one on each side. The reason why you want one on each side ideally is uh, if the bride's stance is just a little bit off. You know, she might just kind of have one hip she cocks a little bit more, or one leg that's shorter or longer than the other. That is super common, okay? So putting in these extra pins, we'll check for that. If it's not a layer that requires a lot of accuracy though, often I'll put a single pin in the middle and I will just with my hands push back on these two layers where the seam is. And if it's an equivalent amount that's gonna be hemmed, I can tell, okay, she's, she stands pretty straight on, and if it's the same amount as the pin, I don't put the other pins in it. This diffusing layer is not to be seen ever. It's to do a job, and that is to just kind of visually soften the look of this layer that's underneath it. Okay, so never to be seen, it is a performance layer. So I do pin it to the floor, but then I'm usually gonna go ahead and cut this about an inch above the pin, okay? So this one is going to be pinned, and I'm going to cut it the 1.25 usually. Everybody else is gonna have a different hem allowance for the type of hem. And as you gain experience, you're gonna get an idea of how much of a hem allowance you need for each style hem. So this one I'm gonna pin and then cut longer. This one I'm gonna to pin to the floor and then I typically cut a little shorter because it's not to be seen, okay? Uh, also know that there's different pinning systems when you work with a team of sewists. Um, if you work, let's say you come into a bridal salon and you work in a team of three or four sewists, uh, they will have a pinning system and a cutting system and they will teach you what it is and you adapt to that. Uh, this, when I give you these numbers, this is just how I personally do it 
There's other ways to do it. If you do it a different way, that's not wrong. Go ahead and tell me in the comments the way you do it. Other sewists may go down there and read those comments and say, hey, that's how we do it too. Uh, but what you don't want to do is go in among a team of sewists and kind of go rogue and be like, well, I do it this way. Um, that can cause confusion. Also know that it's, it is common too in some larger bridal salons that have larger teams of sewists. They will often have uh, seamsters who pin and then seamsters who cut and hem, seamsters who press, and they just have that one job. So oftentimes in those kind of places, uh, the bride meets the seamster who pins her, but she never even meets the seamster who cuts her hem or sews it or presses it or packages the gown. So keep that in mind too. So wherever you work is going to have a code for the pinning um, if someone else is pinning then cutting. In this situation, I'm speaking to the most common situation and that is when the seamster pins for herself and she's working for herself. So that covers the diffusion layer. Next most common layer that I see under here. Um, oh, and let me go back and add, often on top of this layer, you will find um, the, 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 the first solid lining layer that's, that has the horsehair braid. It's most often a satin or a pongee fabric is what it's called. Um, sometimes you'll see like heavy satin with the horsehair braid and then you'll see sometimes two or three layers of uh, an opaque pongee layer or a lightweight satin layer on top of this and they may just have a rolled hem or something like that. So let me go back and show you that. Okay, so Krenlin, this layer with the horsehair braid, this is going to have usually a greater hem allowance when you've got to go over that horsehair braid. So in this instance, let's just say you've got two layers of the pongee. Same thing, I'm going to pin them to the floor. If we are still several layers away from the outermost layer, I'm probably going to cut them at the pins and let the hem allowance for a simple rolled hem on a pongee layer or a lightweight satin layer. Um, my hem allowance is usually about three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna let the, in, let the hem be about three quarters of an inch off of the floor. These are also layers that you don't ever want to be seen peeking out from under your outermost layers of your hem. So let's go back and do that. Here's your diffusion layer. Now, we will often see an organza layer. Let's talk about that. This is a tomato tomato. You can say organza, organza. I've heard it both ways, it doesn't matter. I usually say organza, so if you say it differently, go ahead and spell out the pronunciation in the comments and let us know how you say it, okay? But let's talk about this. We put in a pen for this. We made sure the fitting was complete, and we put in one pinning session, regardless of how many pins it took for you to get accuracy um, in the cutting room. We did all of this in one pinning session, okay? So this is a second pinning for this. Again, this is perfect world scenario when you get to see the bride as much as necessary. So this is the organza layer. What I would do is for the fitting when, that you bring the dress out with all of this hemmed, okay, that fitting, that's when it comes out with the organza layer is still the original length, and then whatever layers you have on top of that. You might have um, two or three layers of tulle, 
or you might have a tool layer with an applique or a lace layer with an applique hem, something like that. But I would make sure all of those layers are still the original length. So I would have the bride hold up those layers. Okay, so just to recap, this is the third time we're pinning. We pinned once for the Krenlin. We pinned the next time all those solid layers. And this is the fitting after that hemming has been done. She's standing in the organza layer, okay? In a perfect world. If this layer needs to be floor length and there's not any other layers on top, or there's just one or two sheer layers on top, very sheer tool, and this is pretty much needing to be floor length. What I would have her do is I would have her stand on a block that is equivalent to the hem allowance that I need, okay? So you could have her stand on a one inch block if you feel like you want one inch for your organza hem allowance. That's very fair. Let's say your roll um, if the if the hem is going to be say this wide, the roll is going to be this wide. Let's say you want three quarters of an inch hem allowance. If she stands on a one inch block, that just gives you a little bit of room for error um, due to like the loftiness of the hem or the shifting or whatever. Okay, so you will have her stand on that block. And that's when I would cut that layer to the floor, okay? That means that means I'm crawling around on the floor with the shears and I'm cutting this to the floor. This is not something that I can give you a video and show you what to do. I mean, I could, but it's not going to translate into you being able to do it. This is something that's just going to take experience. Just go to the Goodwill, go to, you know, wherever, if you can get damaged gown donations, whatever, and practice. Practice on a gown that it doesn't matter, okay? Or, um... You could have, if you have a petite bride, if you want to practice on it, say it's a your daughter or a family member or something like that, and you get a Goodwill gown, have her stand on like a three-inch block, okay? And practice cutting at that length. Hem it. Get her back on the block. See if you did it right. Then have her, okay, let's put you on a one-inch block and try it. And just keep practicing until you can learn how to cut to the floor on an organza layer. Now, what, ha what happens with organza, I have a saying, never trust organza. <laughs> I mentioned that in the cutting video. It is a very shifty fabric, okay? So when you go to sew this, you're going to run the fabric through the machine uh, like this, right? You're going to be pushing it through. It's going to be getting pulled and pushed this way. Same with when you go to, to press it. You're going to have some motion going in this direction, right? You may do some to get some of the lettuce edge out of it, but you're going to have a lot of this kind of motion pulling and pulling and pulling. So keep in mind, after you have cut this, and you have hemmed it, and you have pressed it, when you bring that out to the next fitting, this may be starting startlingly short, okay? So what I do is I tell my brides when they're getting in their dress, because you don't wanna stress them out, make them cry, I'll tell them, leave your dress open in the back. I'll close up your dress for you. That means they don't get a lot of time alone with their dress looking in the mirror and studying the hem without you having a chance to adjust the hem. Okay, so tell them leave it open in the back and then also tell them there's a very strong optical illusion. When you first put your dress on after we hem it, it looks short. And there's something I need to do to lengthen the dress while you stand in it, so don't panic. I always talk them through that 
before I put them in the dress because you don't want tears unnecessarily, right? So you get them in the dress and you're gonna start pulling. Pulling. You're gonna be grabbing the dress and pulling like this, pulling down. And this dress is just gonna kind of magically float down to where it needs to be. Um, many a seamstress has been accused of cutting it too short and they're like, I don't know what I did wrong. I, I know I didn't cut it and hem it too short. And that was actually the problem. It was the pulling of the fabric this way, drew it up and to solve it, you just pull it back this way and that fixes it. Okay, so if you have a gown that has the outer layer of organza, you're done, yay. <laughs> but a lot of times that is not the last layer. We'll often have some layers of tulle. And in that case, I just go ahead and um, if there's any more layers, of course, above that, you have them hold it. But I would have them hold the layers above this and drop them down one layer at a time and I just cut to the floor. At this point, um, there's no need to stand on the block if there's no other hem layers that have a finish to them, okay? So this is if they're all raw edge as if it's like tool or something, okay? Um, this is also how we treat a outermost layer that has uh, either tool with a hem applique or a lace outer layer that has a hem applique edge, okay? So this I only use usually for the organza layer. That is the tricky layer that you can't trust. Now I'm gonna speak to the outermost layer being a lace layer with a hem applique edge. Now you can see why it was so important for me to start with the details and work my way back. Uh, because I want you to be able to reference, if you're not familiar, how to hem an applique hem wedding gown. I have several videos on that, okay? So now let's say we are at the final layer. All the other layers have been hemmed and are correct, and we are on the outermost layer. And let's say it is a lace, it's an all over lace fabric with some appliques and it has a hem applique. What I would do for this fitting is I would mark the floor with a pen, floor length, I guess it would be like down here, right? I would mark it, this is the floor, in several places, okay? The front, the front quarters, the sides, Mark all of that, and you're gonna wanna have a discussion with the bride about how much length she wants on the side. She may want it floor length on the side. She may want it somewhere in between. That's where most of my brides fall. So again, I go into depth about this uh, on my how to hem a dress with the applique edge. But for instance, if we have to hem the center front, uh, let's say six inches. Oftentimes they'll have it hemmed only three inches at the side seam and quickly tapered into. Okay, so they don't, most brides don't like it just like severely exactly to the floor at the side seams. They like a little bit of a flare. Okay, so you're gonna mark the floor or whatever your system is, you can mark where she wants the finished length to be. Oftentimes, when I get to the outermost layer, if there's an applique involved, I will write in my notes, hem as pinned. That way I know I didn't mark it to the floor. I marked it where she wants the finished length. It helps to pin with that in mind on your outermost layer, just because you can kind of visualize where she wants it. And it's, you know, it's gradual. It's not like a formula. Um, so, I mean, I guess you could make it a formula. You could say, put the pin there and say, okay, pin it five inches in the front and, you know, two and a half inches on the sides. 
but for the most part, I pin it where she wants it to fall when it's finished. So when you go to hem this dress, you're going to temporarily remove the hem lace. Oftentimes, if I'm still working on other things, like let's say we're making custom sleeves or she hasn't picked her bustle yet, oftentimes I'll bring the dress out even at this stage. We'll have removed this and this will still be a little long and I'll cut this as she stands in it and that way we can get the gradual shape that she wants absolutely perfected. In that instance, when I cut it, I'm just going to cut it a quarter of an inch to a half an inch shorter than the finished length that she wants, particularly if there is a scallop edge. This is super important for you to keep in mind as you are pinning. If there is a scalloped edge, she's not going to want these underlayers peeking through in these little picky up parts, okay? She's going to want this to be a little bit long on the floor and for all the other layers to kind of nest in behind the lace. So that's why if I were to cut this as she stood in it, I would just cut it, like I said, quarter of an inch to a half an inch too short. And then I would pin the lace on while she's in it and let her walk around and do a hem check. Make sure sometimes the weight of this lace will weigh down and the under layers, there might be a layer or two that's a little too long that you got to go back and shorten just a smidge. Sometimes something will peek out and you'll like, oh, okay, I, I see I need to shorten the satin layer or whatever. So it's great to have a hem check. But that's how I like to do my hem checks with the lace hem applique gowns. A lot of people I know, a lot of seamsters will just roll it under or roll it up and pin it and have them walk and do a hem check that way and let wherever the end of that fold is be the final length of the dress. I just personally find more accuracy doing a hem check this way. Now, if you do not have the luxury of having that one extra fitting, you can certainly go by the pins that you put in this dress. And as you remove your applique, you put the you transfer the pin to that main lace fabric layer exactly where it was pinned. And when you take this away, you go ahead and hem your dress as needed, cut it as needed, again making it a little bit shorter than what you want your final length to be. So if your pins are here, and you want to avoid the scallop showing anything, you might hem it a half an inch shorter than your pins. And then you're going to keep that in mind because this is going to be cut away that this is going to be tipping down and half an inch longer than your finished edge of your lace fabric or your tool fabric. Okay, so then that's when you're going to put your lace on, pin it, and uh, again, here's where you're going to have a di divergence of the next step. Uh, some seamsters who prefer to work with fewer fittings and shorter fittings, some of them are they, are, they are under the pressure, I'm telling you. They are limited on their number of fittings, and they are also limited on the length of time they can have with the bride. So in that case, they're just going to go ahead and have this sewn down and ready. Uh, if you're not limited on the time you can have with the bride, you can have it completely done in this thoroughly pinned down. Um, this is if you didn't, you know, have the hem check with her before. Have it thoroughly pinned down. Then have her walk around and do her final fitting. See if any of this needs to be changed. If it does, that's great. We can still move this if we need to. Check and make sure this is okay. And then you can sew this layer down while she waits. Uh, if you have the ability to do a free motion stitch or an applique stitch on your sewing machine, then you know that this often does not take very long. So they may only have to wait 
10 or 15 minutes for you to sew this down. And then oftentimes at a full service final adjustment fitting, they're also waiting for their gown to be steamed and whatnot. So oftentimes I'll just tell the bride, okay, we've got everything we need for your final touch-ups. Um, you guys can go out and enjoy the town or get a bite to eat. We'll see you back in 45 minutes to an hour. And then that way they don't feel like they're, you know, bored in your waiting area or something while you do this. Um, just keep in mind, like I've said many times, seamsters have a different approach. Everybody's different. If the gown turns out beautifully, then you're not doing it wrong, okay? So if you don't do it just like I do it, you're not doing it wrong. If I do it just like this and they turn out perfect, then I'm not doing it wrong. Um, we all have a different approach. There's many, many different approaches to sewing. This is just something that is tried and true and has helped me to get very accurate lengths with ball gowns that have many, many layers. As you know, these full ball gowns often can have, you know, six to 10, 11, 12 layers. <laughs> it gets crazy. So um, you want to keep in mind how each layer before or each section uh, before can affect the next layer. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. And yeah, you go on and have a great week. Thanks for being a part of this community. I really appreciate it. Please like this video, share this video. It's a tremendous blessing to me. Thank you, bye. Now make sure to go watch that cutting video again.